Hi, I'm Chris Naniga with Swift Otter, and you're viewing a video that's part of our free preview of our upcoming Magento 101 course. This is a course that's custom tailored for you if you're completely new to Magento and Adobe Commerce and is going to provide a crucial foundation to walk you through the most critical aspects of development on the platform. So I hope you find the content in this video useful and stay tuned for the release of the full course. We're continuing to look at key concepts we're going to encounter again and again in Magento. And another key concept is that of dependency injection. Uh, so you may be familiar with dependency injection and may have used it extensively in other frameworks, in which case uh, really all that's going to be new to you here is the specific mechanism that Magento uses for it. Uh, if you have not encountered dependency injection before, then there might be a steeper learning curve here, uh, but you will get used to this and get the hang of it uh, quite quickly because you're going to be doing it a lot when you are writing PHP classes in your customizations. Uh, so dependency injection is simply a design pattern where one object receives the other objects that it depends on uh, from some external source instead of instantiating those objects itself. Uh, and I've, I've just pulled up a pretty random example here from the core code base, in this case from the uh, this theme sample data module. Um, and I'm using this to demonstrate the constructor injection, which is the particular uh, mechanism that Magento uses for dependency injection. Um, so here in the definition of this, of this head style class uh, in its constructor, uh, it's taking an argument, uh, this config cache type argument, um, and we have a type hint here, a type hint that is of this particular uh, config class. Uh, that's being assigned, the, the object that came in from the constructor is being assigned uh, to a property on the class, so then that dependency can be used throughout the class. Uh, and if we look down here where that's actually being used, we can, we can examine this a little bit and, and kind of see what the, the advantages of dependency injection are. Um, so without dependency injection, uh, this, this class that is that has to be used by, by the class that we're in here uh, would have to be instantiated with a statement uh, with a statement like this. So we, we might say uh, config cache type equals, and then we've got to use the new keyword to instantiate, uh, instantiate an instance of that object before we can use it. As soon as we've done that, we have, we've basically hard coded a dependency on exactly that class uh, in, in this class. Uh, and the problem that creates for extensibility like we need in Magento is that then basically the behavior of this, this config class uh, can't be modified or can't be replaced by modules anywhere in the system without touching this file uh, to, to change this statement to instantiate something else instead. Uh, with dependency injection, with that dependency being provided by an external source instead, uh, in Magento's case via the constructor, uh, this allows uh, other other areas of the system uh, via some kind of configuration to to replace this class and say uh, actually a different class should be used anytime uh, anytime that's a dependency it would obviously have to be a class that extends this one uh, because we have a we have a type hint here that says whatever comes in here has to be an instance of this class uh, but still if we created a class that extended this config class but then modified certain aspects of it to behave the way we want, um, then that could replace that dependency everywhere that it's used, everywhere that it's injected in a constructor like this, without ever having to touch these classes that actually use it. So that's dependency injection in a nutshell. And in Magento, it's all about uh, injection via constructors like we see here. Now, uh, obviously for this to work, there has to, be, uh, there has to be something that's responsible for this injection somewhere in the Magento architecture. There, there has to be a layer somewhere in there that's actually making these decisions uh, about uh, when, when a, a, this class is required, uh, what, what class do we actually instantiate uh, when, when we're needing to pass arguments into the constructor uh, instantiating this other object. And in Magento, that class is the object manager. Um, so this is one of the first objects that is instantiated in Magento's bootstrapping process in any given request. 
uh, and and kind of becomes the the ubiquitous class that is responsible for for instantiating and fetching uh, any other classes that uh, that are required. We're not going to look really into the details of this object because it really is going to be kind of invisible to you as you develop. Uh, but but just know that that uh, that is the class that is involved here. And uh, with the use of the object manager, uh, really one class using another just kind of becomes a chain of calls to the object manager. So really, you're not going to be using the new keyword to instantiate an object anywhere in your code uh, and and one class injects another which injects another and so on and the object manager kind of just deals with all of that so this this kind of random class we picked to look at would be getting injected into uh, into another class presumably in exactly the same way the object manager uh, takes uh, takes that into consideration uh, and 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 uses uses these constructor parameters and and configuration that is loaded to figure out what what dependencies need to be instantiated before it can instantiate this class for each of those it's going to look at their dependencies so this config class that we were looking at before uh, the object manager will look at its dependencies in its constructor parameters and and determine what it needs to instantiate before it can instantiate this class and so on and so forth until it kind of reaches the leaves of the tree and is able to instantiate the first objects that are passed in as dependencies to to the other objects up the chain you may be noticing that with this pattern and how it's used like we see here in this class uh, that really everything being injected is treated in a in a singleton pattern so we receive an instance of this config class uh, that that is then stored on this property and is then is then used throughout the class so that might be creating the question in your mind of uh, when i have classes that uh, that i really do need multiple instances of um, transport classes or or classes that represent a database record maybe uh how how do i actually instantiate new instances of of those objects rather than just receiving this this uh one singleton in a constructor and that's done with the use of factories which is something that we will look at and talk about later now let's talk about one other thing before we move on uh, and uh, th this is the reason that I zeroed in on this uh, third argument of this constructor and didn't talk about any of the rest of them and that is you can see that for the rest of these uh, it's actually interfaces that are being injected rather than concrete classes um, or at least the first two arguments here and and this is also why we didn't start with the example that we already have in our module of dependency injection uh, so here in the one class, the one PHP class that we already have in the view model directory, uh, this questions class, we are already using dependency injection. We have our constructor that's that's injecting one of the core classes here, only we are injecting an interface. And so I want to talk about that briefly as a pretty core architectural concept in Magento, uh, which is a, a very a, a, a huge emphasis on depending on interfaces instead of on concrete implementations um, so while it's not uh, while it's not across the board while you will find plenty of classes in magento that don't necessarily implement an interface um, lots of the core types of classes uh, do do have an interface uh, that defines their their uh, public methods that uh, that models are or, or classes are implementing and and the key convention in the architecture is you want to depend on interfaces or service contracts as they're sometimes called uh, rather than depending on a specific implementation of them and with what we've talked about here with dependency injection the the reason for that should kind of become apparent uh, we talked about the ability to uh, to use configuration to replace what class actually gets instantiated when it's used as a dependency um, in, in the case when classes are depending on concrete other concrete classes um, that that limits any any modules any custom functionality that want to replace those uh, to actually having to extend the class that they're replacing even if maybe they, they don't need to borrow any anything that don't need inheritance 
um, in that relationship, when we are when we're depending on an interface instead, then we are just depending on on a public API. We're depending on a particular signature and the contract of what a class has to provide, and uh, anything that would come along and actually replace uh, replace an implementation with another just has to implement that same interface and we avoid the entanglement that comes uh, with imposing inheritance on our components. So in order to make use of a, a piece of functionality from the core, from another class, we injected this scope config interface into our class, uh, which means that we are depending on the public API of that interface and what it provides. We need some implementation of that to be delivered to us uh, by the object manager, by the dependency injection system. Uh, but that begs the question then, so how does the object manager decide uh, if, if all it's encountering is dependencies on interfaces, how does it decide what actual concrete class it's going to instantiate when it encounters those? Uh, and for that matter, the, the broader question here is with this whole dependency injection system, uh, where do we put our configuration uh, that we want to use to perhaps modify or replace different components in the system? So that's when the, the configuration file DIXML comes into play. Uh, so let's just uh, take a look in any DM, uh, DI XML files we can find for this particular uh, interface name. And we should, whoops, let's try that again. And we should be able to, to see how this, uh, how this is being provided for the object manager. I'm zeroing in on this, uh, this particular search result here with this preference node. So DI XML files, uh, just like just like the uh, other XML files that we've seen, uh, can live in the Etsy directory of any module. In this case, the one, uh, the the particular result that I found here is in what could kind of be considered the root DI XML file. It's directly in app Etsy, uh, but but DI XML files can also be included in in the uh, Etsy directory of individual modules and most. Of the configuration in the system is, uh, but we landed on this because it's in this root file that we see this this preference node for that interface that we're depending on, uh, and this is what tells Magento the the configuration that whenever this interface is required as a dependency, it's this concrete class uh, that should be instantiated and provided for that. So it's this preference node in DIXML, and this is what makes this extensible. This, uh, this is what allows uh, one module to perhaps uh, come in here and supersede this uh, with a different preference if it wanted to replace the, the implementation of scope config interface that should be used throughout the system. That's just one of the things that DI XML configuration can do, and uh, one of the ways in which it can influence and, and manipulate how the process of resolving and instantiating objects uh, by the object manager, uh, how that can be done. We have already seen a little bit um, in the way of DI XML's other capabilities when we looked for an arguments node in a DI file. Um, so this is a syntax in DI XML that allows you to specify for a given class type um, arguments that will be uh, passed in. So in this case, we are looking at an example uh, where just via DI configuration here uh, for an array argument that is passed into the constructor for a class, uh, th this is actually specifying a, a subarray and then string values of that array uh, for the object manager. So uh, with this configuration, when the object manager is resolving uh, resolving this particular dependency before it instantiates that object, uh, it, it will actually it will actually create these arguments to pass into it. That can also be used to uh, to maybe change the class that is injected for a particular uh, for a particular object dependency only in a specific context. Only when class A uh, is being instantiated do we want to inject class B for a particular argument as one of its dependencies. And, and, and this is this is a key extensibility feature because again XML merging. All of this gets merged together from different DI files uh, before Magento does its thing. Uh, so this is what allows many different modules in different parts of the system uh, to happily work together uh, to create the final configuration that's used by the object manager. 
another thing that you can do with DI configuration is create virtual types, uh, which is basically a clever way of specifying a unique configuration of a certain class just by the, the unique arguments that it gets. Uh, and plugins are a pretty critical, uh, critical concept to understand in DI configuration as well. Uh, so let's find an example of a plugin. Um, don't don't even know what module that we just clicked into here, but uh, plugins actually allow one module to to uh, change the behavior of a public method on a class without even needing to be as obtrusive as replacing that class in the DI configuration, and that starts to unlock some real. Uh, extensibility power uh, because once you have plugin classes that can just target uh, modifying a specific method then you have the ability for multiple modules possibly to kind of exist in harmony with each other uh, modifying the same core component same method maybe without basically having to have one of those modules uh, take final precedence in replacing an entire class um, so plugins and virtual types, these concepts uh, that you can use in DI configuration really start to unlock a lot of the uh, extensibility power in Magento, and there is a lot you can do with them uh, combined with proper composition patterns in the way you architect your classes uh, to, to provide provide a lot of uh, extensibility and pluggability in the way you write your custom code. DI configuration is a pretty advanced topic in Magento. It, it's definitely something as you get into more complex development that you're going to be dealing with, uh, but we're not going to be covering in this course um, plugins or preferences or really using DI XML configuration like we were just looking at. Uh, really, this is just part of, again, another bird's eye view to kind of give you a whole picture of the topic of dependency injection in Magento. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to, to do some more, uh, some, some more study, some more reading once you've kind of got the basics in Magento uh, 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 down uh, to do some some more research into the topic of, uh, in particular, plugins, uh, because they can be one of the one of the greatest tools that you have for modifying core functionality in Magento. Uh, but for now, with the topic of dependency injection, uh, really the thing that we want to uh, to absorb and put in our tool set is simply how dependency injection uh, is going to be used as we write classes uh, for for uh, injecting and consuming. The, the functionality of other classes that we depend on.